Ichimon Japan is made possible by Patreon support. If you would like to make sure that we can keep bringing you more content like this, then head on over to japankyo.com slash Patreon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. First of all, I didn't know that honey badgers were that popular. <laughs> oh man, they're just all the rage in America. <laughs> <laughs> all the youngins are, are going crazy for the honey badgers. Um, it's all they talk about is like TikTok and honey badgers. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Welcome to Ichimon Japan. I'm Tony. And I'm Ryan. Ichimon means one question, and every episode we ask a question about Japan. Today's question is What is the best Japanese name for a bear that is not actually a bear? Another question I'm sure everyone has been scouring the internet for. <laughs> Yep, yep. Look, I, I mean, I, I think we've basically said this before, but I, I'll say it here. I'll make it very clear. Like, maybe 70%, if not more, of this show is me <laughs> wanting to talk about something and then having to reverse engineer a question in order to talk about that. <laughs> um, and, and today I, I wanted to talk about raccoons, but I ended up looking up a whole bunch of other stuff. The funny thing is, most of uh, these animals aren't even native to Japan. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, they've got some very <laughs> funny names, okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about. Like I said, I wanted to talk about raccoons at first, but uh, yeah, it just went down a whole other um, bear hole instead of rabbit hole, all right? <laughs> a non-bear hole. A non-bear hole, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, <clears throat> we're going to talk about some funny things here then. A lot of stuff that I learned for the first time, which is always fun. Um, all right, so what is the best... No, no not the best. The first non-bear bear that we are going to talk about yeah in in no specific order we're not ranking them in quality of being a non-bear but the first one anyway is the anaguma yeah so anaguma all right so I, maybe i should give a little bit of context here just in case for for anybody that doesn't know what a what bear is in japanese but kuma is bear in japanese okay and and oftentimes the ku will become gu if there's something before it Yes, thank you. Yes, exactly. So you're going to so hear me. the guma of anaguma is bear. Yes, exactly. So, um, but there are many animals in in Japan that officially in their name have kuma or guma in it, uh, and even though they're not technically bears. And in English, you get that a little bit. Sometimes you hear like koala bear or panda bear, um, but. I don't think those are like, yeah, well, no, it's not, I don't think. Those are not officially part of the animal name. Those are just kind of things that people say, right? Yeah, probably. I'm not a, I'm not a non-bearologist, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so the first one that we're going to talk about is anaguma. And ana means whole in Japanese. And so yeah, in English, it's the whole bear. The whole bear. So we're going to talk about whole bears. Uh, basically a, a whole bear in Japanese, it means a badger. And, uh, there are, uh, Japanese badgers actually. And I learned this for the first time. Um, they're, they're called in Japanese, Nihon Anaguma. So Japanese, Nihon Japan. Anaguma. Yeah. Yeah. Nihon Anaguma, uh, Japanese whole bears, um, or. And they're like, native to the great whole of Japan. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. They're great. They're native to the Japanese holes and they are bears, right? That's, that's a syntax joke for you, for you guys out there. That actually sounds terrifying. If you think of it, like if you're just walking and suddenly an actual bear just like jumps out of a hole. <laughs> it's a whole bear. Watch out. <laughs> um, and it's not a big hole. It's like a normal, like baseball sized hole, but a full size, like 400 pound bear just leaps out of them. <laughs> Don't come to Japan. It's dangerous. Yeah, there's bears, there's whole bears all over the place. <laughs> so probably the reason why badgers got called anaguma is, I, I assume, I'm pretty sure that they live in, you know, kind of foresty areas, then they might pop out of holes and, you know, kind of weaselly sort of things because they are part of the weasel family. Um, now, uh, one interesting little side thing that I discovered was that the uh, Nihon anaguma, the Japanese uh, whole bears or badgers, are also called uh, mujina. And uh, Mujina are kind of like the, almost like the folklore equivalent of 
badgers of Japanese badgers in a way in that they are often lumped together with like foxes and tanuki um these like real animals but there's a lot of like stories about them like uh transforming into humans and tricking humans and doing various things so um i guess maybe back in the day they were called mujina but um at some point they ended up being called anaguma or nihon anaguma and uh one one other interesting little thing i found was in uh, a japanese i think it was like a an english message board like for people like learning english uh somebody asked how do you say anaguma in english and then somebody answered oh it's badger and by the way um in in english or in america honey badgers are quite popular and that is mitsu anaguma so first of all i didn't know that honey badgers were that popular <laughs> oh man they're just all the rage in america <laughs> <laughs> all the youngins are, are going crazy for the honey badgers um it's all they talk about is like tiktok and honey badgers <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> and honey badgers with tiktok <laughs> yep 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 um there was a slight popularity boom i remember maybe 10 years ago when people like found videos of them like fighting much bigger animals yeah maybe it was from them. and I, I think there was some kind of like meme or song about badgers like uh like one of those repetitive ones like badger 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 something like that a while ago uh, again i think that was like 10 or 15 years ago uh but anyway yeah mitsu means honey so mitsu anaguma is honey badger honey hole bear <laughs> honey hole bear yeah I, I gotta make an online screen name that's just honey hole bear <laughs> oh my god i think you'd attract the wrong kind of person with that <laughs> I just realized that as I said it, you're right. I, I will, I will do a different name. Yes, yes. There's, there's some other good ones here. So hang on, um, before you make your final choice. Uh, so uh, yeah, obviously badgers are not actually bears in the scientific classification of what a bear is, but they, I guess, but they can... identify as bears. Bears who live in holes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So well, you know, I, science I guess... can't tell them who they are. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. This is you, you you hit it right on the the head on the the nail on the head. There we go. Uh but um uh, again, I mean, you're going to find a common theme with all of these. They do look I guess a little bear like, so you can kind of figure why people would just dub them bears. Uh but yeah. Ana ana guma. I I am now curious if some of the bear sightings in my city have actually been non-bears and we're like getting nervous for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, by the way, and this was released, I think we talked about this in the previous episode to this one, um, Annoying Things in Japan, part two. But uh, Ryan has been experiencing a lot of bear sightings in his city lately, or city and prefecture. Um, so It's cooled down since like snow started falling because I think they're hibernating. But yeah, there was a lot of them this year. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, now, now it's it's been a, a few months since we recorded that one, but now we're in the winter. So uh, Anyway, what is the next non-bear bear that we're going to talk about? Uh, the Fukuro Guma. Yep, Fukuro Guma. Okay, so again, we have the Guma, which is... So, Fukuro is yeah. bag. <laughs> yes. And Guma is bear. So, the bag bear. The bag bear, yeah. Now, typically, just in your daily use, um, you would translate Fukuro as bag, like Ryan said. Now, of course, Japanese... Or ouch. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> There was a typo in my in my notes where I meant to write pouch because that is another way you can translate Fukuro as pouch. But I accidentally wrote ouch, which, you know, confused Ryan for a bit. It said it, you can also translate Fukuro as ouch. And that just, yeah, is not true. It's pouch. Yeah, I was like, I didn't know that when you hurt yourself, you could yourself Fukuro. <laughs> no, no, it's pouch, pouch. It seems like a complicated word to shout out in the moment. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fukuro. <laughs> <laughs> like chop your finger off. You go, Fukuro. <laughs> um, all right. So Fukuro, Guma, Pouch Bear. I think, you know, we're thinking uh, maybe a, a marsupial, maybe. And yes, we are talking about marsupial. No, nah, just a bear with a bag. It's just a bear. It's a bear that went shopping. Um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> this is a really interesting term because it, it's, I, I didn't know about this, but uh, apparently, and, and this is not used, like I've never heard this in modern times, maybe this is just kind of antiquated and only a few people would actually know this, but Fukuroguma can be used to refer to koalas, Tasmanian devils, and wombats, all of which I guess kind of look like bears and also have bags on their bodies <laughs> or pouches. Uh, but uh, here's a, a, an extra little thing. 
the the Japanese term for a marsupial is uh, yu tai rui, all right? And uh, the kanji for that is have bag variety or something like that. <laughs> The bag havers. The bag havers. Yeah, yeah. Very, very literal. I'm going with bag havers. Uh, sometimes I absolutely love Japanese when they go like super literal like that. It's just so easy to understand, right? Marsupial. It's like, what the heck is a marsupial? So to be fair, I got to point out, if we actually spoke Latin, I think yes, it's doing yes. the exact same thing. That is absolutely true. <laughs> yes, yes. Probably. I, again, I didn't look into the origin, but most of those are Latin. So yeah, but we don't speak Latin. And a lot of times Latin overlaps or because it's the predecessor to Spanish, of course. And so there's some similar roots, but marsupial doesn't overlap with the Japanese, with the Spanish word that I know for bag, which is bolsa. So I don't, I don't know where that came from. Well, I mean, there was also like a thousand years in there. Yeah. And there's probably other words to refer to bags and pouches. I will also point out, even though you can say fukuroguma, no one does. Exactly. Yeah. Like everyone says koala. Yeah. It's, koala is. 100%. I, like I said, I've never heard Fukuroguma ever until... I, I've never heard it either. I'm not surprised. Yeah. It sounds like one of those old-fashioned names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like even my students, they maybe have not heard the term Fukuroguma. Exactly. I'm, I'm just guessing. But yep, yep. Yeah. And then one other um, term that I found specifically for koalas was uh, Kinobori Fukuroguma, which is literally the tree-climbing bag bear. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not even a name you're just describing it <laughs> it's the bag bear that climbs trees <laughs> it's like as if its scientific name is like that animal we found in australia that one time <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I, I guess they needed a distinction between the bag bears that don't climb trees and the bag bears that do climb trees <laughs> so what happens if we take a tasmanian devil and a wombat and just like shove them up in a tree well, it didn't climb the tree. It's just like Kini The Iru. scientist doesn't know that. <laughs> Kini Iru Fukuroguma. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the bag bear that is in a tree. <laughs> or like Kini Okareta. <laughs> Kini Okareta. <laughs> like the bag bear that was put in a tree. <laughs> so yeah, bag bears. I, I'm a really big fan of this. Um, now, another interesting thing here is that there are other names for Tasmanian devil specifically. Uh, for example, there is the uh, Fukuro Kuzuri, which is the uh, bag wolverine. All right. Because Kuzuri is wolverine. So the bag wolverine is a Tasmanian devil. <laughs> Again, it can be pouch wolverine because bag, pouch, whatever. The bag wolverine. <laughs> um and then th this this one I, I particularly enjoyed too. Um, the fukuro anaguma, right? Fukuro anaguma. So it's the <laughs> bag hole bear. Again, anaguma badger. So the bag badger, <laughs> pouch badger. <laughs> that can also be Tasmanian devil. So there's a lot of fun terms for these uh, marsupials in Japanese. It feels like by the time Japanese biologists got to Australia, they were just like out of animal names. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, we're down to just bears and we got to use modifiers now. <laughs> Everything's a bear. <laughs> the bear, like the bear family in Japan is very small. So just add some things to bear. Yep. yep. The kangaroo, that's a hopping bear. The uh, platypus, that's a... Yeah, Tobuguma? Yeah, a, the Tobuguma, Tobuguma, yeah, yeah. The platypus is a hoppy poison bear. <laughs> no, no, not, not a hoppy <laughs> poison bear. I'm sorry, a ducky poison bear. There we go. <laughs> Ahiru Dokuguma? <laughs> yeah, Ahiru Dokuguma. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Um, uh, and then, <laughs> this is a total tangent. And, and But uh, as I was looking into this whole koala thing, uh, I, I discovered that uh, koalas had a brief boom or popularity spike in 1984 to 1985. So what happened was there was a convergence of multiple factors. There were two animes that aired as well as um, in Australia, or rather Australia, I guess, shipped or gave or, or bought or sold. I don't know whether it was sold or gave, but sent koalas to three zoos in Japan, uh, Hirayama Zoo, Tama Zoo, and Higashi Yamazu. And so this convergence of these two anime that had koalas in it, as well as these 
koalas arriving in Japan just made people kind of go a little crazy for koalas. Not as much as perhaps some other booms, quote unquote, that that we've maybe talked about. Like the um, what's the one that we talked about? The uh, the uh, tsuchi tsuchi no ko, tsuchi no ko. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a, a far longer lasting uh, boom, so to speak. But um, the, I, I went down this this koala hole, so to speak. <laughs> uh and uh <laughs> it's not the koala hole it's the non-bear hole <laughs> yeah yeah and uh in in 1984 there was this anime called uh fushigi na koala brinki all right and I like uh, heard of that so i i realized that i had at least watched some of this in peru in spanish where it was called sandy y sus koalas <laughs> So, so Sandy is the name of the female main character and that means Sandy and her koalas. So the show is about Sandy and this magical koala that looks like a stuffed animal, but when she nuzzles it or like rubs her nose on its nose, it comes to life. But then there's this other magical koala, like a female koala, Printi, that she appears. And I think they're from like an alternate dimension. Um, I just looked at a picture. I have totally seen this too. I think it's not super obscure, but it like in in I don't think it ever officially aired in any like English language channels, it's, or at least not in the U.S. Because I did see um, some English titles. Like one one English title that I saw for this was Noozles. I guess because she noozles her nose. I, I didn't know that was a word. I guess nuzzles is a word, but um, and uh, the wondrous koala Blinky. I think that was another English title that I saw for it. So maybe it aired in other countries. But I didn't see it in the U.S. Uh, and I did watch some of it in Spanish. And and I watched episode one today. And it was uh, interesting. <laughs> so there are these like magical koalas. And then, yeah. Th- anyway, I'll, I'll include a link to that. So then a little bit after this one aired, another one aired, which was called um, Koala Boy Koki. <laughs> <laughs> this... this this title, like I when I read it, I started laughing so hard that I was just crying. <laughs> Quada boy cookie. <laughs> I don't know, it just sounds too funny to me. Uh, so this ended up airing on Nick Jr., I think like in 1988 or thereabouts. Um, so it got translated into English and it's called The Adventures of Little Koala or something like that. Um, now this show has an awesome like opening song i loved it i will include the it english in, the, the in the show notes japanese i, I didn't watch the english I, 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 don't, I don't know what the english was maybe this is the one i saw it looks almost the same yeah yeah Th- this one was uh on nick jr so maybe you caught it no like, but on i remember there being the human girl and this one doesn't have one yeah this one is only animals they live in a village of only animals uh and the village is called yukari bireji which yukari comes from eucalyptus and so bireji is village uh but for some reason there's like a penguin at least one penguin there um and they're supposed to be in australia or or a place modeled after australia yeah penguins they love eucalyptus (laughs) and hot climate and well there are warm climate penguins but still um i don't know it 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 seemed like the the title just made me laugh that's all I, i i don't know much more about it but i just thought that there was this uh Something funny about 1984, 1985, there was this kind of like mini panda craze, not panda, koala craze going on in Japan. So Mini bag bear? Mini bag bear craze, yeah. The key nobody... Mini bag bear yeah, boom. T- tree, tree climbing bag bear boom, yeah. <laughs> tree climbing bag bears. Not to be confused with the like bag bears in a tree or bag bears placed in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, all right. I think enough koala talk or bag bear talk. Uh, what is the next one, Ryan? The next one is Shirokuro Guma. Yep. Now, this one... All right. So, Shirokuro means... Shiro means white. Kuro means black. Guma, again, bear. What's a black white bear? It's one that you took a picture of, like, in the old days before you had a color camera. True, true. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Or maybe a panda. (laughs) So, yeah, it's a panda. So, I discovered this because one thing that I like to do... Is I I because I guess I'm just weird and I have to create content. So those two converge and I end up doing things that most people don't do. But um, so I I looked I like to look up things in Japanese that have a katakana name. So basically ha- foreign origin name, and then I like to look up what the wame is. Wame means the Japanese name. So when I looked up panda wame, what I discovered is that apparently there is this Japanese name for a panda, and it is 
Shiro Kuro Guma. Now, again, this is another one of these names that I don't think most people would have even ever heard of, but this exists and it was probably used at some point. So um, obviously it's just a literal description of, of what this thing is, right? It's a thing that looks like a bear and it's black and white. So... <laughs> Um, it really is like I was in charge of their science department because this is how I would name animals. <laughs> so literally once I had, <laughs> I, I had, uh, I used to work in a Kiowa, which is an English conversation school. And we had two elderly students who were really friendly and would invite me to go like on nature walks with them. And they wanted to know the names of everything. And I don't know the names of anything in nature. So they'd be like, what's the name of that bird? And I'm like, I don't know. Red bird. <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of that flower? yellow flower <laughs> like in a past life i guess i was a japanese biologist naming these animals yes 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 yes. i mean in your defense every once in a while an animal does have like uh, for example a blue bird right it's a blue it's a bird that's blue yeah every once in a while yeah 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 they actually knew the names of like every bird and every flower in japanese it's like how do you know this yeah, I, don't know. I mean some people are just good at that but yeah I think it's also kind of a generational thing. I feel like no one in our age group cares about birds' names. I think there is a lot more of that, true. Yeah. I mean, if, especially if you grew up in nature and if you're a bit older. Yeah. Especially if your hobby is going on nature walks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a, a lot of, at least from what I've seen, a lot of seniors in Japan do enjoy that. So it doesn't surprise me. But uh, just to be clear here, a panda, from what I was able to decipher, is technically... Is not a bird. <laughs> Yes, it's not a bird. That took me like 10 hours. It's a to common out. mistake that pandas, in fact, are not birds. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, no, what I was going to say is that uh, a panda <laughs> is technically a bear from what I was able to decipher. Uh, so it seems that for a long time, like bear, pandas were kind of up in the air, whether they were tech classified under the bear family or the raccoon family. But more recent, uh, like genetic molecular, like analysis and research seems to, uh, molecular analysis. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They're looking at panda molecules. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those panda molecules, um, <laughs> There's a specific element of P pandonium berryness. <laughs> pandonium. <laughs> They're comprised of seventy percent pandonium. Yep, 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 yeah. You got to stay away from that pandonium. It's uh, ra radioactive. Uh, so, uh, yeah, re more recent like research has classified pandas in under the bear category. So they are technically bears, as far as I can tell. But still, um, I thought this was an interesting one to include, nevertheless. So. So, uh, Ryan, let's do one more and then we'll go to commercial break. What is the last one? So the last one is probably the most famous of these in Japan, and that is the rare Rirakuma. <laughs> yes, the Rirakuma. Um, so Rirakuma is this uh, character that has been around for, I think, at least 20 years, if not maybe a little bit more. Um, and uh, it's what can you describe it, Ryan? It's basically a teddy bear. That looks bored. I don't know how to describe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so th this comes from, uh, if I remember correctly, like like re like relax, right? Relax Kuma, I guess. So um, he's kind of like a yeah, yeah, like a lazy. That is why it does the K sound instead of the G. Yeah, the Rirak Kuma. It's got the glottal stop between the the, the consonants, and then um, that's called often. People just refer to it in, in Japanese as a chisaitsu, <laughs> the little tsu, which does that. And it's um, often referred to in English as small too. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but technically, the, the glottal stop. Anyway, so, um, yeah, he's this kind of like relaxed, I guess, kind of mellow, lazy uh, bear character. But um, technically, it appears that he is not a bear and he's just some sort of creature that is wearing what is called the kigurumi which are these like mascot outfits because behind him on his back, you can see like the line for a zipper. And uh, I, like, if you look it up, it, you'll find it right away in Google Images and all that. But yeah, 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 this is pretty well known. And so there's some depictions where it shows it kind of open and you can peek inside. But nobody knows what is actually inside the suit for real. And those that do know have never returned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, in, in the Netflix show, I mean, he just acts like uh, he, do, he can't speak or anything. He just acts kind of like 
like Snoopy, I guess, in that like he's sentient uh, and he does stuff and he has a personality, but he's he's also like not like able to speak and and he acts kind of cute in a way. So I, I don't know, maybe he's some kind of just fantastical creature, or maybe he's some weird person that tricked a, a young girl to live with her. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember where I heard this because it's been years now, but there is or was a fan theory. This, it's like a joke fan theory that it's basically just like some like middle aged businessman who got sick of his job and just like dressed up like this and just broke into some lady's house and now lives with her. <laughs> yeah, I've heard Because he doesn't want to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard that. Because they live with their friend Cowley. Cowley, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the theory is that, like that was like some new employee because she's younger, like at his place, and he just like I'm sick of work. I'm gonna go like mooch off that lady now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. this is all just like for fun. Like the the actual company's like, no, 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 we don't know what's inside, but it's just magical. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they they probably say he's some kind of fairy or something like that. It's always like a lot of those like Yurukiara mascots are always like it's some dog fairy, it's some yeah. cat fairy, it's some kind of yose fairy. So um, we're, we're done with this part and uh, we'll go to commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about another kind of not bear bear raccoons. So we'll be right back. Hey, so I have two quick things that I want to mention, and then I'm going to throw to another special commercial, which I won't spoil here. So the first thing is that I released a new t-shirt over at kimitodesigns.com. You can go over there, purchase stuff, and that will support this show. That's K-I-M-I-T-O designs.com. The new shirt is inspired by this episode, and it features a cute koala head. Under it, you're going to see Japanese text that reads, Kinobori Fukuro Guma. And that, of course, means tree climbing bag bear or tree climbing pouch bear. And uh, it comes in three different colors. You can pick one. There's a heather green, a heather Columbia blue, and a heather gray, I believe. Uh, they all look great. I happen to get the blue one. And uh, they're selling for $19.99. Some of the bigger sizes do cost a little bit extra. And then there's uh, $4 shipping, roughly. Uh, but if you're outside of the U.S., that may vary. So you can go pick up your shirt now and you can uh, show it off to your Japanese friends, which will uh, no doubt entertain them, but also confuse them somewhat. <laughs> so again, kimitodesigns.com. The other thing that I want to mention is that there's actually another term for koala in Japanese that I discovered when doing the research for this episode. And I just forgot to mention it when I was recording with Ryan. But that term is komori guma. So guma, of course, right? Bear. And then komori actually, well, so I know this word uh, best from the term komori uta. And that means lullaby. But when you break down the word komori it actually has two kanji. One is child, and then the other one comes from uh, the word that means protect. So protect child, uh, you can translate that word as nanny or some kind of like babysitter kind of uh, person. Uh, there's various translations, and the word is not that commonly used. But uh, anyway, so I, I guess this term for koalas comes from the fact that they keep their young in their pouch, but that's not particularly unique to koalas, right? That's a marsupial thing. But this term exists, and it's another one of those terms that probably most Japanese people don't really know. Maybe some do. I'm sure some do, because when I was doing the research for this, I happened to find one person mentioning this on a message board and asking about it. So it's a thing. It's around there. But it's not super common. So now you know. Let's get to that other commercial that I mentioned at the beginning of this little segment. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's get to it. Ryan, welcome to the commercial break. It's your first time in the commercial break. How's it feel? Holy crap. How did I get here? <laughs> how do I leave? <laughs> well, I, you leave when I tell you you can leave. So you got you to gotta do a couple things first. So uh, first of all, I thought I'd have Ryan on the commercial break because uh, this episode is coming out on January 21st and uh, January 23rd would be our uh, uh, one year anniversary. So thank you so much to everybody who's been listening this past year. Thank you so much to everybody who subscribed and uh, just left a review and all that stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And uh, speaking of reviews, we did get one review recently, and I thought I'd share that with everyone. Now, this is a disclaimer. While I don't know this for 100% sure, uh, I am 99% sure that this is a review from our wonderful guest, uh, Kaja, who was our guest for the uh, Funny Japanese Mistakes episode, which was like maybe three episodes ago. Uh, and uh, she was great to have on. You can check out her website at ikigaiconnections.com, and she left us a really nice review. So, Ryan, would you mind reading it? Sure. So her review goes, Funny and educational! Sugoi! I've been studying Japanese language and culture since 1993, and I learned so much from every podcast. I really appreciate the explanations around the Japanese terminology, too. Hosts are hilarious, and I look forward to listening to all these. The Yakitori one was super enlightening. That that was my excited review reading voice, by the way. <laughs> I'm hilarious, apparently, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. definitely weren't talking about Tony. No, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think she just felt bad about using the singular. Oh, wait, I, I found a little bit more. Oh. I'm definitely not talking about Tony. He is not hilarious. Oh, shoot. All right. Yeah, yeah I don't know why she added that last part in there. That's that's oh, okay. Well, I guess I shouldn't have asked you to read that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, if you want to leave a review, then we would be, you know, greatly appreciative just to hear what you guys think. If, if there's any favorite episodes that uh, uh, stick out, you know, mention it in the ep- in the review. We always love to hear back from people. I, I have communicated with many of the patrons uh, personally, and, and they've all been very positive and they've given us a lot of ideas that unfortunately, you know, it takes time to put these episodes together. So we will get to those ideas, uh, but it just takes a little time. So, and by time, I mean, probably a few months. So, (laughs) but yeah, uh, yeah. our first episode was in January, but I think we actually started in like October. (laughs) So yeah, we were recording for a few months before we released our first episode. So um, yeah, that's just how it is just for research. And also just because we want to have a backlog. So we never miss an episode. Uh, but anyway, yeah, remember to subscribe. Thank you so much to everybody who's, who's been listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, and follow on Facebook and Twitter at Japankyo News as well. And you can always email us your questions to ichimon at japankyo.com. Uh, we love to see what you're thinking about. And, uh, you know, I always come up with crazy questions. But if you've got a funny one, an interesting one, then, uh, you know, I'm always happy to get somebody else's uh, interesting ponderings about Japan. <laughs> Oh, yeah. If you have a weird, bizarre thought like Tony does, like about non-bear names, ask away. <laughs> we'll research yeah, it. Yeah, I'll do my best. I mean, you know, if it gets too weird, then maybe it might have to be only like a like a multi-part, like a, I, we answer multiple questions. But, you know, whatever. I, I always love to get, you know, other ideas into the show. Oh, that would be fun. We should do that because sometimes we have had topics where we're worried it's like too short. Yeah, yeah. Just like a compilation of strange things that are too short for a full yeah, episode. Yeah, I, I think we might even do that just from our own ideas at some point. But yeah, anyway, we, you know, if we can get listener questions, even better. So, uh, yep, that, that's it for the uh, commercial break. Oh, and, and go listen to the latest episode of Japan Station. Um, the latest episode is, is with uh, Robert Campbell, who is the director general of the National Institute of Japanese Literature and the host of the NHK World uh, show Face to Face. So he's he's quite a respected figure in the world, especially of Japanese art and literature. Uh, really unlike us, interviews. unlike us. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think we're respected figures in that world, but hopefully somebody respects us. <laughs> Someone somewhere. <laughs> we're respected figures in the world of, of non bear research, <laughs> non bear research. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Well, we're going back to the rest of the episode. Okay, so Ryan, um, I mean, everybody already knows what we're going to talk about, but what's next? The next one is the Araiguma. Araiguma, okay. So this is the the seed of this episode came from this, all right? So guma, again, bear, and then arai, in this case, means uh, wash or washing. So it's the washing bear. The cleanest of all the bears. Sorry, the cleanest of all the (laughs) non-bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, they are like kind of disease-ridden animals that love to eat whatever they can find there, uh, put their hands on, I guess. Clean, um, clean diseases. Clean diseases. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They love washing the diseases. Um, so, yeah, like I said, raccoons. Um, now, this is something that I did not know until I went to Japan and I heard that the name of a raccoon is an araiguma. I did not know this, but apparently raccoons are known for, quote unquote, 
washing their food, right? So they use their little hands to pick up something and then they'll dip it in the water and rub it around and then they'll eat it. But I had never heard of this in the US. And then when I went to Japan, I asked like, why is it called an araiguma? And araiguma means washing bear. And I was explained that they wash their food. But Ryan, apparently this is something that people say in the US, right? Yeah, this is something we were taught in like elementary school in like first or second grade, I think. I, I oh, was well, very aware of this story before coming to Japan. Yeah, see, I, I was not. So I, I don't know why that was. I, I never took the raccoon uh, course. Yeah, we took a whole course on it. It was like a two-year course. Wow. Was that like an honors class or an AP class? <laughs> well, there was an honors version and a normal version. Ah, okay. Okay. I guess I wasn't good enough to make the cut. The honors version teacher was actually a raccoon. <laughs> Wow. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah, I learned another thing today. So thank you, Ryan. Uh, but anyway, I always found this name of, of raccoons to be like super cute in Japanese. Come on, it's a washing bear. Uh, so I, I, I thought I'd do research into this. And this took me down um, two different paths. One was the let's find out more about Kuma names. And two was there's a lot going on with uh, raccoons in Japan. So um, first of all, do they actually wash their food? Ryan. <laughs> Depends on what you define as wash. Uh, ones in captivity do actually dip their food into water, but people think they're not trying to wash it. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I looked into this, both in Japanese and English, um, they said that technically, no, they don't wash their food. But what they do is that, yes, like Ryan said, they dip their food in water when they are close to water sources because they... They like to live around water. And so one English language explanation that I saw was that their hands are very sensitive and they like to rub the food around in their hands. And so in order to, I guess, lubricate it and make their hands more, even more sensitive, um, they dip it in water. And uh, according to research, that helps them kind of feel out the food. And I guess that also helps them determine whether it's something safe to eat or not. So like... A consequence of them doing that is that in a way they are washing their food, but the goal of them yeah. doing that is not to wash food and they don't do it if they are not near water. Um, so, so, uh, but that, that doesn't stop, you know, like media in Japan and all that. And people saying like, Oh, because they wash their food. Um, there's this one really, really funny video, um, that, uh, it's from a Japanese TV show that they, they give the raccoon cotton candy, right? Ryan? Yeah, it's so sad. <laughs> what happens, right? So they give him like a pretty sizable ball of cotton candy while he's sitting next to like a little pool. And he immediately dips it in to like, you know, rinse it off and it just dissolves into nothing. And then the little dude like freaks out and starts like looking through the water trying to find it. <laughs> and it dissolved, so it's not there yeah. anymore. So then they give it another one. He does the same thing. <laughs> And looks so sad. Then they give him a third one. And then finally he realizes to not put it in the water. So he just kind of like sits next to the water and just eats it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's adorable. It's kind of sad. But it's also cool to see that he does learn to stop sticking it in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I absolutely love that video. And I will include it in the show notes. But yeah, raccoons are very smart. And that is part of the reason why they can be uh, very much a problem. Um, especially when they are an invasive species like they are in Japan. So, um Raccoons are not native to Japan. They are from uh, North America primarily, although I also saw mention from Central America. Um, and From the Americas. From the Americas, yes, yes. USA, USA, Canada, and Mexico. USA, Canada, and Mexico. <laughs> That's the diplomatic uh, chant. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know when they officially arrived in Japan for the first time, and I don't know who the first person was to call these guys Araiguma. Uh, but on the Japanese, I think it was like the Forestry Wildlife uh, Government like Department website, it says that in 1962, uh, a family of or a group of, I think it was 12 raccoons escaped from a zoo in, um, in, in Aichi Prefecture. And they escaped into the wild. And so that was the first group of wild raccoon. I don't know you know, how many of them survived and, you know, to what extent they procreated. But what ended up happening in, in the 70s was a lot worse. So in 1977, there was this anime called Araiguma Raskaru. 
So raccoon rascal, literally. No, no, no. Washing bear rascal, literally. <laughs> True. Yes. Washing bear rascal. Yes. Um, but uh, this this anime aired, it was like, I think 52 episodes. It aired in 1977, but it was based on an American children's book written by a guy named Starling North. And uh, Starling wrote this children's book about his experiences living in Wisconsin um, in the early 1900s uh, during World War I. And he was living in the wilderness and he had this pet raccoon that he found as a baby. And so the book, you know, takes about, I think it covers about one year. And then the raccoon, Rascal, gets to the point where he's basically an adult and he's just too difficult to manage because he's a wild animal and raccoons are notoriously difficult to deal with animals right Hmm. so what happens is um and i get the vibe that this is this very famous sad scene that um starling takes the raccoon rascal like in a canoe and then they kind of go far away from the house and then he lets the raccoon go um and the whole story is about loss because uh, Starling loses his brother fighting in World War I. Starling's mother is dead or has, has dies during the story. I don't remember if, if I don't know if she's dead or already or dies. Um, and, and then he loses his beloved pet. And so <laughs> the irony of all this is that the story is about, hey, you know, don't get this raccoon because it's going to be troublesome and it's going to be bad when it grows up. And yet... What happens in Japan is that after this anime airs, people in Japan go crazy for raccoons and they start importing raccoons to keep as pets. <laughs> it's like they didn't watch it till the last episode, right? They just saw the commercials like, that looks cute. Let's get five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I know that they changed a lot of various things from the book in the anime. So I don't know if at the very end, uh, Starling ends up still releasing the, the raccoon or the raccoon just... I don't know, ends up living with Starling forever. I don't know that for sure. I think I think it probably sticks to more or less the original because I was reading something about the canoe in the Japanese interpretation. So I think that probably still happens. But anyway, the point is that Japan goes crazy for raccoons. And according to one Japanese uh, estimate, there was maybe like at least 10,000 or tens of thousands of raccoons being imported for a time. Uh, according to one English source, I thought thousands a month or something like that. So anyway... A few thousand were being imported. But of course, Japanese people quickly realized that raccoons may look cute, but they're not good pets. And so they ended up like releasing them and letting go of them and then just basically throwing them into the mountains and stuff. They realized the animal called a rascal was kind of a rascal. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, so it's become, um, since then, I mean, it seems like it really just exploded at that point. And since then, the population of raccoons has been growing and growing and growing and growing. And according to reports that I've found, uh, it really seems to have gotten particularly bad over the past uh, 10 to 20 years. So, um, for example, in 2005, the raccoons were declared uh, like officially an invasive species. Um, and uh, there's been like funding and efforts by local municipalities to capture raccoons uh, because they cause all sorts of damage from like um, agricultural damage, stealing crops, eating crops. I've also seen reports of them damaging like important temples and shrines because they scratch up the place. Uh, so it's really not good. Um, and I've also seen reports from, for example, like the mid 2010s, uh, estimates that damage by raccoons could go as high as like between three to $4 million a year. So there's a lot of damage being caused by raccoons. Uh, but they're, they're trying their best. Um, and, and there's also sometimes people that say, you know, they're raccoons, they're animals, you can't just kill them. But for the most part, it seems like Japan is, or the, cities and towns across Japan are on the same page here that they want to, you know, get this raccoon explosion under control. Uh, By one estimate, I saw about like 30,000 raccoons being caught a year. And I think that was in the mid 2010s. So there's a lot of raccoons around and being caught and they're causing trouble. And yet, and yet that Rascal, the anime character Rascal is still fairly popular as a mascot character. While doing research for this, I happened to come across a very, very recent uh, press release for a collaboration in a product. It's like a little keychain strap of um, Rascal and Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, which is like the most ridiculously popular anime out right now, especially in Japan. Um, And and there are these little straps, which are like um, 
the characters and uh on their on top of their heads there's a little rascal the raccoon and uh the raccoon is also cosplaying as the various characters so they are very very cute but the the little raccoon is is there uh i also saw a report that they did the same kind of thing with attack on titan so even though the show is like more than what like 40 years old um 30 43 years old 43 years old i think um the character is still around because he's just cute and uh people are still buying uh little raccoon stuff so there you go <laughs> uh all right so that that does it for raccoons and all the all the non-bear bears for today yeah well for today yeah there's a part two no there's not a part two <laughs> don't worry <laughs> there could be a part two someday there could be well i'm sure there will be a part two of other interesting animal names but i don't as far as i know these are the most interesting non-bear bear names so um so yeah, so what is your favorite uh non bear bear name, Ryan? Just the name? Yeah. What do you think has the best name? Oh, that's so difficult. Kino Kinobori Fukuruguma. You gotta go with a really long one. You know what? Yeah, like if you wouldn't have said that one, I I, I would have answered that one. Um, but just for the sake of being different, I'm just gonna say Araiguma because it, it got me recently it got me curious about the name and, and it wanted it made me want to look up other stuff. So I think, yeah, I love the name and it's cute and uh, it's it's so interesting. Oh, one, one last thing about the Araiguma name is that um, raccoons are not bears either. Right? Really? <laughs> they are actually their own um, family, which are the Procinodae. Right? I'm glad you, you tried to say it because I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, it's something with the pros in a day something like that in english but you know what the what the name is in japanese for that family that scientific family it's the araiguma ka so they're just the washing bear family so nice and simple <laughs> yeah perfect <laughs> they're all part of the washing bear family all right so there you go today's uh, episode was uh, a little linguistic a little biologically and just totally random hope you enjoyed it <laughs> anything else you want to mention ryan nah i'm good i was gonna say like all of the episodes are pretty random <laughs> <laughs> yes yes they are and that is why i do this show <laughs> all right thank you for listening see you next time see you everyone Hey, here's a bonus for you patrons, but um, just in case you weren't aware, Kumamon, the very famous mascot character from Kumamoto Prefecture, is also not a bear. He's actually some kind of fairy that looks like a bear. So there you go. But Kuma is in the name, so... But I guess you can make the argument that that's just because it's from Kumamoto. So therefore they put Kuma in the name, but he is not actually a Kuma, a bear. <laughs> So yeah, like I said in the show, a lot of these uh, characters are often described as some kind of fairy that actually looks like the animal that it looks like, but uh, they're not technically the animal that you would initially think by just looking at it. And Kumamon is one of those guys. All right, see you next time.